recovering, healing, overcoming, getting better from, if you have hypothalamic amenorrhea, what should you be doing to get better? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor and this channel is here so that you can learn more about your body, your fertility, and your reproductive health. Please subscribe, ask questions, share the message. That way we can answer the questions that you have, but also so that more people can find our channel. I recently did a video talking about what is FHA, functional hypothalamic amenorrhea, and you can find that video right here. In the one line summary, FHA is when your body does not have periods, which is what amenorrhea means, and it is because your brain is not sending out the signals. So it's not because you have PCOS or because you're an ovarian failure. This is actually your brain is not telling your body to ovulate. And if you don't ovulate, you're not going to have a period. What this means is that the brain connectivity to interpreting the ovarian signals has been broken. Because typically, when you're not ovulating, your estrogen is low. That low estrogen should signal the brain to send out a signal of FSH or follicle stimulating hormone. Low estrogen should tell the brain to send out more FSH. And when that doesn't happen, it's essentially because the hypothalamus has turned the switch off, shut the door. It is not open for business. Why does it do that? And that's important in understanding what needs to happen next. We don't always know the exact etiology of why this happens, but the easiest way to think about it is that your body is under such stress. And all stress is not just mental stress like we think about, but stress, whether it's physiologic or mental, whatever is happening has told the body that it's not convinced that it can support a pregnancy and its functions for daily living. So it has turned the shop off and we want to convince the body to turn it back on. Often this has to do with energy in or energy out, but it is also from true cortisol stress levels plays a role as well. So if you are trying to get better or trying to help your body get over there, you've got to try to understand the underlying cause to the best of your ability. Number one, nobody should ever be diagnosed with this without ruling out the other causes, which I do talk about in the prior video. But PCOS, ovarian failure, thyroid disease, prolactin, the lab panel that covers it. If you come in, the minimal labs that you need, FSH, estradiol, prolactin, TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. That is the minimum, but that's going to give you a large idea on what is going on. Now, of course, once you get there, you're probably going to need more blood work once we know what is happening. When we think about the top causes here, it is going to be extreme exercise, not eating enough calories, intentional weight loss or calorie restriction, uh, chronic malnutrition, which isn't always weight loss, right? Intestinal absorption goes along with that process. And then also chronic illness and just overall stress. So if you're trying to get better, the important thing to realize is the long-term implications of low estrogen. Osteoporosis, you can have high risk of Alzheimer's disease, heart attack, strokes, very serious consequences. And you don't feel good. You are not feeling as good as you normally could. And I know that to be a fact. So if your doctor wants to put you on estrogen, that's the right thing to do. It's important to realize that a normal functioning body is going to have some estrogen present. And so to be walking around planet earth with none is not good. So we want to bring back some. We don't have to go to supra physiologic levels. We don't have to give your body a synthetic form that's not what it's used to seeing. Just for reference, the birth control pill has estrogen and a progestin in it. The estrogen in the birth control pill is ethanol estradiol. That is different than estradiol, which is the exact same compound that the body makes, and that is what we can give you. We can give you estradiol cream, patches, pills inserts in the vagina, all kinds of things. And so that type of estrogen is very physiologic. Your body's going to like it. It's going to make you feel better. And you probably don't even realize how bad you feel. The birth control pill estrogen is so different that it doesn't even read on an estradiol assay. So you could go on the birth control pill, especially if you want contraception. It's not bad, but it's not actually the drug of choice in this situation. It would be to put you on estradiol. 
If you're going to be on estrogen, you do need some progesterone because the body is not meant to also just have estrogen all the time. Estrogen stimulates the lining of the uterus and we don't want you to develop endometrial cancer. That's what can happen from grown endometrial cells that never shed. So my favorite is here is daily estradiol that you're going to take and here is some progesterone that you're going to take every three months if you're not pregnant so that you can shut off those cells and keep everything in check. Importantly, the estradiol is daily. Now, other than that, we're going to have kind of the different pathways. One is how do we help our lifestyle? One, sleep. You've got to get more sleep. You've got to get at least seven and a half to eight hours of sleep at night. Two, if you have external stressors, you've got to figure out a way to try to mitigate them. What does that mean? Everybody is different. Yoga, walks, therapy, meditation, acupuncture, we've got to do something. Three, you have got to look at energy in, energy out. And if you know that you're working out a lot, if you know you're cutting calories, if you know you're not eating enough, you need to try to correct it. And especially with nutrient dense foods. Four, if you think you have GI issues, we need to get those investigated. Things like celiac disease or intestinal malabsorption, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, those things can also play a role because your body's not effectively getting the nutrition that it needs. Or if you have any other chronic illness that you're aware of, these can all play in the same way. So get your chronic illnesses discovered or in check. Presuming that you're doing these things, and let's say you're an exerciser, that you're a runner and you run and you're training for a marathon, you might have to cut back your running days. And I have this talk with runners. It doesn't mean you can't exercise at all. And in fact, because of your risk of osteoporosis, you actually need to prioritize weight training, weight-bearing exercise with weights to build muscle to help your bones as well. And so if you've not had estrogen for over a year, you have FHA, your estrogen level's been low, you then might want to consider getting a bone scan because if you have osteopenia or porosis, you might need other medications to help build back your bones or extra supplementation. Calcium vitamin D is never going to be wrong, but you might need something even stronger. Then it's going to go into thinking about getting pregnant. The truth is at no failure, even if you do everything perfect, your brain is going to have to get back to a place where it feels like it is healed and then stay there for years, typically, before it wants to turn back on. So if you are remote from childbearing, fine. Go on your estrogen, cycle with the progesterone, work on the other things, and hopefully we can restore everything by the right time. But if you want to be pregnant or you're getting older, so specifically if you're 35 or older or you know you want to be pregnant now, we may not have the reproductive time span to wait and see if this gets better. And this is where we might need egg freezing or IVF to intervene to help out. Importantly, if the brain is not working, medications like Clomid or Femara, these are medications that we use for ovulation induction. And what they do is tell the brain that there's no estrogen. So if you tell the brain that there's no estrogen, it should send out more FSH. But if the problem is the brain and you already have low estrogen and the brain's doing nothing, coming in with one of these ovulation induction agents like Clomid or Famara is not going to get the job done. So that's why you're going to need injectable FSH. I have to give your body what the brain is not making. However, that's very tough to do in just enough to get one egg to grow. Because the way the body does that is by communicating back to the brain and saying, estrogen's here, send out less FSH. And I have lost that positive feedback. So if you need ovulation induction because you want to be pregnant, we're typically doing FSH shots. And if we're doing FSH shots, all the data supports that IVF is probably the answer. So the success rates of IVF are higher when you have more eggs and you are younger. And so having that discussion or freezing eggs so you're partway through the process might be something that you should strongly consider based on what your reproductive circumstance is. FHA, it's not your fault. A lot of times it's a disease state. A lot of times it is due to other external factors or you were on birth control pills for part of this time and you didn't even realize it until you came off the pill and now you did not have a period. So please don't judge yourself or blame yourself. But what you can do now is get good information, listen and learn about your body, make sure you have 
ruled out other causes, and that you're doing everything you can to get yourself in the best spot so that your reproductive hormones can get back in check eventually. Hope this video helped you out. Please ask questions in the comments. I'd love to answer them on this video and help you understand this concept a little bit more. As always, you can find out more on the As A Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks, friends.